we have events A and B that are independent. Uh, the probability of A is equals to 1 divided by 3, and the probability of B is equals to 3 divided by 4. The first question, 10.1.1. We're looking for the probability of A and B. The probability of A and B will be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. A and B are independent events. So we're going to have 1 divided by 3, the probability of A, multiplied by 3 divided by 4, the probability of B being equal to 3 divided by 3. 12, which is just 1 divided by 4. This is the probability of A and B, 10.1.1. Let's take a look at 10.1.2. There's a bit of swag here in 10.1.2. The question is saying, what is the probability of at least one event occurring, at least one event taking place? Uh, that is just a fancy way of saying, what is the probability of A or B, right? So the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, right? 10.1.1 uh, was just setting us up to answer 10.1.2. So the probability of A or B will be equal to the probability of A which is 1 divided by 3, plus the probability of B, which is 3 divided by 4, minus the probability of A and B, which is 1 divided by 4. This is equals to 5 divided by 6, 10.1.2. Let's move ahead and do 10.2, uh, quite an interesting one, uh, but I feel like we have solved this problem before in some of the videos we have done previously uh, let's take a look at it the probability that it will snow on the mountains in june is five percent when it snows on the mountains the probability that the minimum temperature in central south africa will drop below zero degrees celsius is 72 percent we're going to make sense of that uh, no need to worry let's just uh, read through our statement and see what information we have. If it does not snow on the mountains, the probability that the minimum temperature will drop below zero degrees Celsius is 35%. Right, and then the first question, 10.2.1, represent the given information on a tree diagram. Clearly indicate the probabilities associated with each branch. 10.2.1 is probably setting us up to do... 10.2.2 but let's just go ahead and solve this problem we have 10.2.1 we're supposed to represent this in a tree diagram well let's start so it's either it is going to snow or it is not gonna snow so snow and not snow one of those two has to happen it's either it is snowing or it is not it cannot be in between or both at the same time so what is, it, what is the probability that it will snow? Uh, it's 5%, right? Uh, we are given that. So we have 5 divided by 100. That is the probability that it will snow. If the probability that it will snow is 5 divided by 100, the probability that it will not snow is 95 divided by 100. I hope that makes sense. And then let's carry on. If it snows, then the temperature can be less than zero. But it is also possible that the, it can snow and the temperature be greater than zero. So what is the probability that when it snows, the temperature is less than zero? Let's go ahead and find out. Uh, you can see clearly here that if it snows, then the probability is 72% that the temperature is going to be less than zero so we have 72 divided by 100 okay and then if the probability that it will snow and the temperature being less than zero is 72 percent then the probability that it snows and the temperature be greater than zero 
will be 100 minus 72, which is 28. So we have 28 divided by 100 being the probability that it will snow and the temperature will be greater than zero. Right, let's move on to not snow and figure out what we have here. So t less than zero, t greater than zero. Okay, so if it does not snow, uh, what is the probability that the temperature will go below zero degrees Celsius? It is given to us as 35 percent so if it does not snow uh, there's a probability that um, the temperature will be less than zero which is 35 divided by 100 obviously for t greater than zero we're gonna have 65 yes 65 plus 35 100 so we have 65 divided by 100 being the probability that it will not snow and the temperature will be greater than zero which makes sense right so this is the information we have um represented on a tree diagram 10.2.1 how many marks three marks yeah it's a lot of work i don't know why it's three marks but anyway uh stories let's carry on and do 10.2.2 so in 10.2 calculate the probability that the temperature in central south africa will not drop below zero degrees celsius in june 2024 we have to use our tree diagram we want the probability that it should not drop below zero okay let's go ahead uh we can see clearly that here it is not dropping below zero because the temperature is greater than zero and even here it's not dropping below zero because the temperature is greater than zero so we have to add those two probabilities how do we do that okay let me show you so first of all, if it snows, the probability that the temperature will be greater than zero is 28 divided by 100. And if it does not snow, the probability that the temperature is greater than zero is 65 divided by 100. That is what we have to figure out. In order to find the probability of the temperature being greater than zero when it has snowed, we have to multiply the probability of snow and the corresponding probability of the temperature being greater than zero. So we have 5 divided by 100 multiplied by 28 divided by 100. When we go up the branches, we multiply. And when we go down, we add. Uh, this is equals to 7 divided by 500. On the other hand, uh, we're going to have 95 divided by 100 multiplied by 65 divided by 100 which is equals to 247 divided by 400 makes sense right if it does not snow the temperature will probably be greater than zero all these probabilities make sense so the answer we're supposed to add the these two we're gonna have 7 divided by 500 plus 247 divided by 400 this is equals to 0.6315 that is the probability that the temperature will not drop below zero degrees celsius in june 2024 right let's move ahead and do 10.3 uh, quite an interesting question uh, i did spend a lot of time on this question uh, trying to see if i'm missing something but anyway uh, we have 10 learners uh, that randomly sit in a line one behind the other so in how many different ways can 10 letters stand in the line oh they stand they don't sit on a line if we have 10 letters and they're sitting randomly then we have 10 factorial ways of which they can see it right that is quite an easy one one mark in the bag 10.3.2 uh, calculate the probability that there will be five learners between the two youngest learners in the line. That is where things start to get interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and have our... Uh, I don't want to say our seats, but yeah, let's go ahead and, and have 10 spaces. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've always used this method. Uh, this method and i'm always going to use it okay 
Uh, so we have we want to find the probability that five learners will sit in between the two youngest learners. So let's say for instance we have y1, y1 being the first youngest learners, uh, youngest learner, and then in between we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, the learners, the five learners that are supposed to be between the two youngest. And then after that we have y2, right? Uh, the second youngest learner. And after that, we're going to have six, seven, eight, right? So in total, we have 10 learners. So let's go ahead and make sense of this. The probability is going to be equals to uh, some number divided by the simple space, which is 10 factorial. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So we can have y1 first or y2 first. So there's two factorial ways in which y1 and y2 can arrange themselves between themselves. Okay, so this is a uh, two factorial. Is it that y1 starts or y2 starts? So there's two factorial ways of doing that. Multiplied by, now let's take a look at uh, the five liners in between y1 and y2. Well, they can arrange themselves in five factorial ways, right? Okay. So now that uh, we have taken care of y1 and y2 and the five liners in between, we need these seven liners to move as a unit because they need to be in between those two youngest liners. So if they're moving as a unit, then we have one, two, three, four ways so we can play around with the seven liners and the three that are not in between. So that is another four factorial ways we can arrange uh, the three learners that are left out with the seven learners, uh, the two that sandwich the five in between them. So the probability is just two factorial. So we have two factorial. Let me just put that in my calculator. Multiply by five factorial, multiply by four factorial, divided by 10 factorial. Uh, this is equals to one divided by 630. Yes, uh, let me know in the comments if there is something I'm missing.